This is the Christensen MPR, the modern precision rifle. You guys have asked me, oh, about a million times to review this thing. And I've been shooting it for the last week. I still can't decide if this is my dream gun or if it's really just lipstick on a pig. Let's find out. Today's video is brought to you by two mysterious wooden boxes that magically fall out of the sky. Let's see what's inside. Holy cow, look at that. I got these two set up. These are awesome. It's from a company called Skull Bliss. What they do is they take ethically sourced real animal skulls and in Bali, Indonesia, their artisans carefully craft each piece into one of a kind artwork. I'm sure you, like me as a hunter, enjoy seeing these beautiful animals around our homes. I have them in several places. I think this one is gonna be the one to go in my office. I wanted to get a kind of a bright color so you can see it in the dark background of these shelves. And my son begged me, who loves everything black, to have this one on a stand like this in his bedroom. It's just really cool home decor. Be sure to check out Skull Bliss at the link in the description. That's Skull Bliss in the link in the description. They have some great sales running now. We're gonna jump straight into the accuracy for this gun. I've been shooting this for a week now, and unfortunately, the only ammo that I could find for this is Precision Hunter because this is chambered in 300 PRC. My groups have not been great, but I've been kind of shooting in the hottest part of the day, and I kind of wonder if the ammo is heating up, if we're getting some issues there. So I came this morning while it's still nice and cool, and let's see how we do. Since this has a muzzle brake on it, I always use two different types of hearing protection at once because I like my hearing. Dang it, just what I'd seen before. All right, here's taking a look at our target. The cold bore shift, that top shot was bad. That was 2.4 inches after that first shot we're down to 1.2, but I, I couldn't call any of these my fault. I shot a good group, I really think. It do, doesn't like the load, or there's just a big cold bore shift with everything. I don't know, because I don't have more ammo to test it with. Obviously, that's not the kind of target we want to see from a gun that costs over $2,000. I mean, I have plenty of guns that cost a quarter of this price that can outshoot it. But that's more of a comment about the chambering than it is about the rifle. So this is chambered in 300 PRC. And I mean, you pretty much have two options that I know of for a hunting bullet, ELDX or CX. And so if you have a rifle that just doesn't happen to like one, you're pretty stuck. And so I definitely can't say that the accuracy of the Christensen MPR is bad in some way just because of this. I have one load to test. I don't know of any rifle that shoots every load well. And because it's 300 PRC and very hard to find, I just don't have any more to, to test it with. I will say that looking at other reviewers of the MPR, I did see some checkered responses on, on accuracy, but the vast majority were positive. So don't let it sway you too much, but that's just an honest look at my results. I saw a pretty big cold bore shift and all week shooting this gun, many, many groups, I just never saw anything that I would probably say was under an inch with this ammo. We're gonna bounce back to the office and just take a look at the platform as a whole. Man, that is a hot looking rifle. I love the modern look on guns, the old stock stuff. I love too, I love the old guns, I love the new ones. But when I'm talking about like my personal hunting or precision rifle, I want all the new features, I'm all in on it. And so this is right up my alley. I mean, when I see, when you see this on the rack, it's like, yeah, I want that one, right? But then you look a little bit closer and there are some significant issues. Remembering that this is a premium priced rifle and the magazine does this. That's a lot of wobble. Like it's just going everywhere. I am shocked that that's kind of the, that's the way they're doing that magazine. That, that just definitely needs to be fixed up on a rifle in this price point. I wondered if something was just wrong with this one, 
but I watched a review from another guy that had the same thing and, and I've seen them on store shelves that, yeah, that's just, wow. Um, that really, that shouldn't happen. Now the feeding has been good on this rifle, but not perfect. I have had some where it just kind of caught as you're pushing the bolt forward and just didn't quite feed. I had to kind of come back and go forward again. So the feeding is, I would, would say good, but not flawless. The folding stock works so well. SIG, you need to take a look at this because the SIG cross does not work nearly this well, the folding. Just a simple button, fold it, it stays with a little magnet on the side, flip it out, and it's locked. It works perfectly. I wouldn't mind if the hinge were moved forward a little bit because we're only getting whatever that is, maybe eight inches that we're really collapsing. It feels like maybe it could have been nine. Uh, just to get this as short as possible, sticking this in a backpack going hunting or something like that. The platform handles recoil exceptionally well. The, they're using a limb saver recoil pad, good choice, because uh, yeah, in a 300 PRC, they've used a very thin, I would say maybe a quarter inch thick limb saver, but it's with the combination of the brake, it's really doing the job the recoil felt like a 6.5 Creedmoor, and that's not hyperbole like it felt like a 6.5 Creedmoor with the combo of the brake and the limb saver. I think this platform is excellent in those higher, heavier cartridges because it's really not very lightweight. This chassis weighs about three and a half pounds, which, you know, is fine for a precision rifle chassis. That might even be considered light, but for a hunting chassis, that would be considered heavy. Now, I'm kind of doing this review from both sides of the coin because, I mean, it's called the modern precision rifle, but a lot of people are also going to use this for your general shooter and your hunting rifle as well. And so um, it, it's, it's definitely not light. This gun as a whole is, you know, over 10 pounds with the arc and scope on it. Uh, it's around 11 and a half pounds. So it's, it's a chunk for sure. Let's go to the trigger. So they've decided to put the Trigger Tech Field Trigger in here with a flat blade. I love Trigger Tech triggers are great. Flat blade, I just really like. Uh, it makes no difference the curved or flat in terms of my ability to shoot, but it, I think they just look awesome. It just feels good. So I like that, except it only goes down to two and a half pounds. And this is called the Modern Precision Rifle. I don't know of a single precision rifle shooter that uses a two and a half pound trigger trigger. The other thing that I think is a miss here is we have this huge full length carbon fiber uh, forend and it's good except where is the Arca my friends? Uh, they do have M-Lock here so you can add Arca and that's fine but man I would love to just see that become part of the stock. If this is a modern precision rifle, a modern precision rifle, everybody's using Arca. Now this full forend uh, going around the barrel here looks awesome. However, it does have a problem of, uh, this scope is very low to the top of the guard here, and yet it still had to use at least medium or high rings. Most people are needing to use high rings as I looked around the internet in order to get this thing to scope. It's not that big of a deal because you have an adjustable cheek rest and so it's not really a big deal to have your scope up high. I don't know how much real functionality there really is to wrap all the way around, but it looks cool. This is Christensen. This is Christensen's kind of typical action here. It is a good action. As I mentioned before, feeding's about 95% for me. There are times that it gets a little bit, you know, where a little gummed up in certain spots, but this is a very long action in kind of a Remington 700 pattern. And so it kind of makes sense for that to happen sometimes. I would consider this to be a, a suitable action for this price point of a rifle. So we take a look at the platform as a whole and we go back to that question from the intro. Is this Jim's dream rifle? or is this kind of lipstick on a pig? And by that, I just mean something that looks awesome and it looks awesome, but just kind of has inherent flaws 
that aren't uh, that aren't fixed. I don't know if I can quite say still. I, I really like a lot about this rifle. It's a fine rifle for sure. And I'm sure a lot of people have them and are totally happy with it. I do think there are some inherent flaws in it. The feeding was pretty good, but not perfect. I personally wasn't getting good accuracy, but we might have to just try more loads to see about that. It does handle recoil well. It's very shootable, but it has a little bit of a heavier trigger. And we don't get really some of those modern features like Arca, etc., on there. It comes in a ton of different chamberings. There is a lot, a lot to like about Christensen's MPR, but also some problems. So which is it? Lipstick on a pig? Or is it your dream rifle? Let's hear in the comments.